Facebook, a company that everybody wants to intern at, to work full time at, a company that has amazing career development and progression. Psych! That's the wrong number! Oh! Welcome to another video guys and today I'll be talking about my journey of how I got the opportunity to intern at Facebook and just to clarify that I did not intern at Facebook as a software engineering intern, rather I was a front-end engineering intern. So here I am, a first year at the University of Rochester and I get to meet this senior who's majoring in computer science and he gives me this golden advice that I should learn web development and why is that? Because they tell me that all of the new level entry level positions are all going to be related to web development and boy oh boy was he true about this that's true and yeah that's true that's true that's true. That's pretty true. So my first year passes by, I was mostly indulged in my coursework. So I did not really focus a lot on my skill development. But then comes the summer between my first year and my sophomore year, where I was recommended this web development bootcamp by Angela. And this was the best decision that I ever made in my life because doing that bootcamp really allowed me to indulge myself deep into web development, to learn the basics of full stack development, especially the MERN stack. And this really allowed me to give myself a good foundation for my later internships and skill building. So later in between the summer of my sophomore year and my junior year, I was able to intern at a startup called Bridge Burma, where I was able to work as a full stack engineer to create a fully fledged chatting application for their website. And this was a really great experience because I was able to experience what it felt like to work in a team, to work as a web developer within a startup setting, and to really get solid advice from some of my mentors as well. So a key takeaway from my journey thus far is that you should still apply for internships during your first year and sophomore year because that will really allow you to understand the process going forward. When you have experience, you won't be indulging your time to learn the process, rather you will be focusing on the essentials. So one key thing that you guys might have noticed that I was revolving all of my learnings and skill development around one key area which is web development. So I was completely focusing on that. And this is really important if you want to stand out because if you really focus on an area of interest, an area that that you really want to develop, then you'll be able to learn it more easily. Also, you'll be able to stand out amongst all of the applicants that are applying for the same position. But that definitely does not mean that I'm discouraging you from exploring because if you want to find your area of interest, then you would have to somehow experiment and to explore all of the key areas so that you're able to develop skills in an area which you have interest in. Also, after my first year, I had a rule of thumb that I would not overload a lot of courses. Rather, what I did was that when people were doing double majors and doing a lot of overloading of courses, I would take lightweight courses and instead I would learn a skill or a technology during the semester. For example, during my sophomore year fall semester, I started learning React, which was the very reason that I got my internship at Facebook. I would recommend that instead of overloading courses, which are basically useless and won't even teach you any real life stuff, try to learn some skills and technologies which would benefit you in the long run. So this advice of mine goes especially well with your recruiting season. So whenever you're planning to recruit, you should take lighter courses that semester because recruitment in itself is like taking eight credit course or like two courses. So I would recommend that you plan your semester out, that you plan your college life out so that when you get to that part of recruiting, you're taking lightweight courses and you're already done with the heavyweights during your college life. Another mistake that I've seen a lot of people do is that they prioritize their exams and their academics over their recruiting season. And please do not be that person because your recruiting season is far more important than your GPA. Make some compromises on your academics, but do not compromise on your recruiting because once you get that internship or you get that job, nobody will really care about your GPA. So try focusing on your recruiting instead of your GPA because in truth, companies don't even care about what your GPA is. But I would still like to put a disclaimer that I do not mean that you should completely ignore your GPA. I'm just saying that you should try to maintain a decent GPA. Do not go for like a 4.0, especially during your recruiting season. Try to like maybe go for something in between in the middle so that you're prioritizing your recruitment journey but also not completely ignoring your GPA. And one other and very important tip is that please do not learn Angular over React. So now while I'm doing this internship at Bridge Burma in between my sophomore year and junior year summer, this is the time when I have to start applying for internships because summer is the time when positions start opening for next summer. So you should be ready by the summer to apply for next summer. You should have your resume ready, get it reviewed and start applying 
as early as possible because the earlier you apply the greater your odds are that you'll get the interview so at facebook i applied with a referral and how i got the referral was that i randomly spammed people on linkedin copy pasting a single message to about 40 50 people one of them replied they agreed to give me the referral and why they agreed to give me the referral is because referrals are basically beneficial to the employees as well because if i'm getting hired the employee will basically get a bonus out of it but it's kind of like a win-win so do not be embarrassed when you're asking for a referral just go for it now applied for my internship in august but i had a waiting time of about two months before i was called for my first interview so in between those two months i was grinding on lead code i was doing various questions i was also learning some fundamentals of web development so that i'm able to do well on those type of interviews as well because i was recruiting for web development positions as well as well as software engineering positions so it was kind of like double work for me because i had to grind lead code as well as some web dev style questions so facebook scheduled my first interview by the end of october and i was given about two weeks to prepare for the first round also they provided a good list of resources to prepare for the interview and the first round was a theoretical javascript round which was basically a recruiter spamming about 20 questions back to back and expecting me to answer them and the recruiter was non-technical so I was not allowed to ask them any follow-up questions. I was just asked to state my best assumption and just answer accordingly. So for the preparation of this first round, I googled a lot. I was googling some common JavaScript interview questions. Most of them were theoretical. I was YouTubing a lot of these questions. So by these techniques, I was able to crack the interview pretty easily because most of the questions that were asked within the interview were pretty famous JavaScript questions such as closures and like OOP and stuff. So I passed my first round and then I was given another two weeks for my next round which was basically a mix of lead code and web dev style questions so at Facebook they expect all of the web engineers to be software engineers first so you could be asked a lead code question or a web dev question so my first round started and I was basically asked a lead code style question but it was also mixed with a bit of web dev because it was a tree question but the tree was a dom tree so there was kind of like a trick that was mixed in between the question that you were expected to know now I'm not gonna lie I had actually seen the question before because Facebook has a tendency to repeat a lot of questions. The question that I got was from Glassdoor so I would definitely recommend that if you have a Facebook interview coming up then you should go on Glassdoor, do some research, also do the lead code top 100 questions that are asked at Facebook and you would be pretty much set for the interview. Nice. And please do not let Facebook know or Meta know that I advise you to do this. <laughs> Now I was able to crack this interview pretty well because I had seen the question before but a neat trick that I did was that I modularized my code a lot and even during the interview my interviewer was really appreciating the style that I took towards solving the problem especially the modularization so I would re definitely recommend that you also follow that approach try breaking down your solution into smaller functions so that would really help your interview to understand your code and it would also let them know that you have good coding fundamentals and techniques. Knowledge! So I get done with my first round and after a few days I get an email saying that I'm being called for the second round and I was also given two weeks in between to prepare for this interview. The resources that were listed were the same that were given to me during my first round which was a JavaScript theoretical round and basically how I prepared for these interviews was just going through a lot of lead code top 100 Facebook questions and also a lot of web dev related questions that I found on Glassdoor. So my second round was a bit different. It was the first question was a JavaScript optimization problem which I was able to solve using a bit of hints. The second problem was basically a web dev animation style question and I wasn't able to solve this completely because we were lacking a bit of time. So after the interview, I did not feel as confident. I thought that I had bottled the interview. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. And I would not get the offer for the internship. So basically, I had self-rejected myself even before Facebook had rejected me. So after a waiting time of two weeks, I had completely forgotten that Facebook even existed. It was not even an option for me because of the self-rejection thing that I had done. So one random 4 a.m. I get this email that you, I have been accepted at Facebook and boy oh boy, I was jumping all over the floor. I was, I woke everybody up. I was going crazy at that time. So one key takeaway was that I did not have perfect interviews. So a lot of people say that to get into Facebook, you need to have these perfect interviews. 
perfection. And no, you do not need to have a perfect interview. Rather, how Facebook assesses you is that they, for every person they interview with, they basically create a package for each and every candidate which goes through the hiring committee. And what the package consists of is your resume, your first recruiter interview, then your first technical interview and your second technical interview. So even if you have one very good round and a few average rounds, you will still be able to make it through because the hiring committee does not want you to give a perfect interview. Rather, what they want is that you have one good interview so that one interview gives you a very strong hire. And even if you don't have a very strong hire on the second one, you would still be able to make it through. So my advice for you would be to find your niche, find an area of interest that you're really interested in and become really good at it. Learn those technologies, learn those skills, focus on skill development more than you do over your academics because those skills will help you get this internship, will help you get those jobs in the future. Try to plan out your schedule for what courses you're going to take in advance because what you want to do is that during your recruiting season, you want to be taking easy courses so that you're focusing on your recruitment as a priority. Also, just believe in yourself because personally, I applied to 200 companies and all of them rejected me except for Facebook. So you can see that it is a process which requires a lot of grind. It requires a lot of self-belief and it requires a lot of hard work. So just keep believing in yourself and never stop the grind. If you like the content in this video, then please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to show me some support. I really want to get to a thousand subscribers. So subscribing would be really beneficial to me. And as always, see you guys in the next video.